Okay, today we're going to take a look at um, a little trick of factoring out a negative. All right, this will come in handy uh, if you've got a polynomial expression and that leading term has a negative coefficient and the directions say factor completely, you're going to want to probably go ahead and factor out a negative so that it will set it up nice for the rest of the problem. When you encounter a trinomial, you'll be able to easily factor it. All right, so in this example right here, I have a polynomial. My leading term has a negative coefficient. All right, so that I'm gonna, that's going to tell me, okay, when I do this, I'm going to take out a negative factor. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and factor like normal. I'm going to look at the 3 and the 12 and the 15. All right, the greatest common factor that I can take out of all of those would be a 3, but I'm going to choose to make it negative because I want to get the negative 3 out of that first term. All right, then I'm going to take a look at all of my variables. All right, the largest number of variables that I can take out is going to be an x. So my greatest common factor I'm going to take out is going to be a negative 3x. So I'm going to take that negative 3x out, and then I'm going to see what's left. All right, in this first term, I've got negative 3. I'm taking that out. I've got x to the third. I'm going to only take out one of those. It's going to leave me with an x squared. All right, middle term, I've got a 12, and I'm going to take out a negative 3. That's going to leave me with a negative 4. All right, I've got two x's, and I take out one. That's going to leave me with one. All right, and you can always double check yourself. All right, if I were to distribute this back out, I should be able to remultiply this and get what I started with. So a negative 3x times a negative 4x is going to give me that positive 12x squared. Okay, so I did do that, right? Um, now in this last term, I've got a 15x. I'm going to factor out the negative 3. That's going to leave me with a negative 5. And then x, taking out the x, then I will not have any variables right there. Okay, now directions almost always say factor completely. So now I have taken out the greatest common factor, but I can't necessarily stop. I need to check this inside here and see if it's something that can be factored further. All right, it turns out to be a nice little trinomial. And in this case, yes, I can use guess and check and factor this. If I would not have taken the negative out, I would have had a negative leading coefficient right there, and then it would have been hard to factor this trinomial. All right, so by taking that negative out, see it's just a little trick, it helps you to factor this trinomial a little bit easier. All right, now hopefully factoring the trinomial guess and check is something that you've already done, so it's not my intention of teaching that in this lesson. Okay, a trinomial will factor into two binomials. This one has a nice little leading coefficient of 1, so I just need an x and an x because x times x is x squared. You're going to find, uh, by guess and check, find two numbers that multiply together to equal negative 5, but add to get negative 4. That turns out to be a positive 1 to negative 5. So plus 1 and minus 5. 1 times negative 5 gives me that negative 5. Checking that middle term, I get a negative 5x plus a 1x will give me the negative 4x right there. All right, so um, just a little trick there. All right, leading coefficient on a polynomial is negative. Go ahead and factor out a negative so that if you have to continue factoring, it's going to make the factoring probably a whole lot easier. Um, if you like the video and the little trick you think is going to help you, go ahead and give me a like. And, of course, you can always subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that, too. Thanks.